Welcome again. I'm Chris with the library and we have Tanisha with us this evening. How are you, Tanisha? I am doing really good. I'm ready to talk about some tech pioneers. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to you, but I will be here in the background if you need me, okay? All right, Chris, and we'll go ahead and meet you back when we are ready to take questions. So let me just bring back up my PowerPoint. There we go. So a couple of things about our African American Tech Pioneers program. This is actually part two. So there was a part one, just forgot to put that on the beginning there. So um, we are gonna talk a little bit more about how you can access the part one. And actually we are going to lead right into that now. So our resource shout out, let me go ahead and turn off my camera so we can have me full screen. So our resource shout out for today as we like to do with all of our programs, we like to have a book or a resource shout out. So our shout out today is African American Tech Pioneers Part One. So you can find this program on our YouTube channel. We can be found at Tampa Hills Lib. It is part of the Black History Playlist. Um, this video, um, this recording of this program will also be added to the Black History Playlist as well. So you can watch part one and go back and rewatch part two if you're interested. But there is, today is part two and you can go and rewatch part one. So we're going to go ahead and dive into our first African American tech pioneer. So the first person we will be talking about this afternoon is Frank S. Green Jr. So a little bit about him. He was born in 1938 in Washington, D.C. Um, he began his academic career at Washington University in St. Louis. He was one of the first African-American students admitted. Um, he also got his master's degree in electrical engineering for Purdue and a doctorate in the same field from Santa Clara University. So between his master's and his doctorate, he was in the Air Force and he worked as an electronics officer. He was also part of the team that patented the fastest computer memory chip at the time. So he did this as the founding CEO of the Technology Development Corporation, which completed a number of high profile STEM projects for the federal government. So some of the things that his company did is they um, did avionics equipment for the F-16, which is a fighter jet, um, the spe space shuttle program, and a communication system for scuba divers. So lots of cool things that he did with the company that he helped found. Um, he was also a venture capitalist. Um, he founded numerous technology startups and he was a business and a financial advisor to many people who are interested in tech startups. Um, he, the two major companies that he founded were Zero One Systems and New Vista Capital. So one of the cool things about New Vista Capital is that that venture capitalist firm was focused on um, funding startups from underrepresented fields. So from African-Americans, other minorities, that venture capitalist firm was set up just for them. Um, he was heavily invested in the representation of Africans, Americans in STEM, founding many scholarships and like the venture capital firm that I just uh, mentioned that supported startups for marginalized groups. Along with um, his um, tenure in technology and with venture capitalism, he also was um, very involved in teaching. So he taught courses in computer science and electrical engineering at Stanford University and Santa Clara University, his alma mater. And he also worked closely with the NAACP. He was a big advocate for having um, um, Africans Americans into the technology field. He's won a slew of awards for his work in STEM. Uh, one of his key achievements, um, key philanthrop philanthropic achievements is the Frank S. Green Scholars Program, which is a K through 12 program geared towards students with an interest in science and education. It's a very successful program and he has a very high graduation rate for students who are enrolled in this program and their college admittance rates are very high as well. Um, I always like to add in a couple of cool things about some of our tech pioneers that's not all just focused on their achievements. So some things about him were his favorite color was blue and his favorite season was the spring. 
So sadly, he did pass away back in 2009, but his contributions to the technology field, to venture capitalists, um, to the STEM, you know, Africans, Americans in STEM is very, um, he did a lot there. So our next tech pioneer is Nola Hilton, who was born in 1957 in Mount Vernon, New York. So a little bit about her. She began studying physics in grade school and she was one of the few black students in her class. Um, she went on to obtain a degree in chemical engineering from MIT and a doctorate in applied physics from Stanford. So um, one of the few African-American students, let alone African-American woman, who was pursuing a doctorate in this field at the time. She is a key contributor to breast cancer research. So she helped to develop magnetic resonance imaging for the detection, diagnosis, and staging um, of breast cancer. So, you know, figuring out how advanced um, the breast cancer may be, um, imaging to seeing what the, what, for lack of a better phrase, what the damage is. Very, a lot of different research and helping to make those processes better. Um, Right now, she is currently a faculty member at the University of California, San Francisco, and the Department of Radiology and Biomedical Imaging and serves as the director of breast imaging of the breast imaging research group. So she is an internationally known leader in breast cancer research, and she has been for 20 years. So she is very well known. She's been doing this for a long time. She is also on the diversity inclusion team at her university. She serves on that board. She is also a principal investigator for the National Cancer Institute. Um, she's won at least eight awards, as I mentioned before. She got her doctorate back in 1985, and she was one of only a handful of African-American women who was getting a doctorate in the STEM field. Right now, she is curr currently focusing her research on the use of MRI techniques to monitor breast cancer treatment. So bringing that te technological expertise into um, helping um, people through their uh, cancer treatment, trying to streamline those processes, make them better so that people can get treated faster and improve the rates of um, breast cancer survival rates. So uh, Ms. Hilton is doing a lot of really awesome things in the field of breast cancer research. So let's go on to our next pioneer. So who we have for you now is Mark Dean. Uh, Mark Dean was born in March, uh, March 2nd, 1957 in Jefferson City, Tennessee. So he studied electrical engineering throughout his academic career, obtaining a bachelor's from the University of Tennessee, master's from Florida Atlantic, and a doctorate from Stanford University. So a couple of really cool things about him is that he loved to build things. So as a kid, as a teenager, he built a tractor from scratch with his dad, which is just crazy to me. Like he just built a whole tractor from scratch with his dad, um, put that together. Um, he also excelled in athletics, so he was really interested in athletics and was a great athlete as well. Um, something interesting about his studies, and we're going to talk a little bit here in a minute about his work with IBM, is that he actually started working for IBM right after he got his bachelor's degree. So he actually earned his other degrees while working for IBM and doing all of the other things we're about to discuss now. So he um, started his career with IBM very early um, in his life. So he had a number of career achievements. Um, notably, he is a co-creator of the IBM personal computer. So some of you guys watching may not be familiar of what the IBM personal computer was, but it was one of the first PCs ever built for mass consumption so that, you know, Joe Schmo off the street could go buy a computer and have in their home. So he was a co-creator for that. He also developed the ISA bus. So I had to do a little bit of research on that. And essentially what an ISA bus is, is that it is a um, device that allows for plugins such as disk drives and printers. So he essentially developed a system for you to connect other things to the, the PC, to the actual PC. 
um, so that you could have a printer, so that you could have disk drives and all those other things. So he developed that, which is a big deal. And he also made the first one gigahertz computer processor chip. So Mark Dean did a whole bunch of stuff for making um, computers accessible to the regular, to um, the masses. So really, really cool there. A um, couple of other things about what he did. Yeah, I mentioned that he mentioned that. Um, Mr. Dean is the first African-American to be named an IBM Fellow. He's also been inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. As you can see here, he's helped invent a lot of stuff that Inventive Spirit started when he was um, younger, you know, building tractors. Um, he also holds over 20 patents for his invention. So he's invented a lot of stuff, including, and this is big, three of the nine patents for the first IBM personal computer. So um, I would, when doing my research, a lot of the things that I was reading is, you know, bigger names like, you know, Bill Gates and um, Steve Jobs, you know, they're the names that everybody knows in the, in the field of personal computing. But he has also done a whole lot to make computers accessible to the masses. Um, he, his name, I think, should belong up there with like the Steve Jobs and the, um, and the Bill Gates. Um, something I thought that was funny and a little bit of irony is that he currently relies on tablets as his main computing device. So after doing all of this work to make personal computers and to make, you know, these developed systems, he uses tablets. So there's a little bit of a uh, little trivia for you there. He actually prefers to use a tablet instead of a PC. And finally, now this is a tech pioneer that a lot of people are probably very familiar with um, based on, and you know, there's a little hint there with the movie Hidden Figures, but I have to say at a personal note by far, she was the most interesting person um, to research across both of the tech pioneers program, um, Ms. Katherine Johnson. So she was born in 1918 in West Virginia. Um, passed away just a little bit ago in Virginia. So a little bit about her, she's going to become a little bit more um, recognizable here in a minute. Um, she started her career um, very early. So she at, um, started high school at like 12 or 13, um, and she attended high school and attained her bachelor's degree at West Virginia State College. Now, I'm getting a couple of different dates and times of when she did. Some places, um, some um, sources cite that she graduated high school at 14. Some say that she graduated at 18. There's probably a little bit of um, confusion there based on the fact that she attended high school and, and college at the same place because West Virginia State College, which is a historically black um, institution, had a high school on their campus. Um, while she was there, she took every single math class she could possibly take. She loved math. Um, all of her instructors, all of her teachers noticed that she had a strong aptitude for it. So she just took math and ran with it. Um, she later went on to be the first black woman to attend West Virginia University's graduate school. So herself and two um, black men um, integrated the graduate school. Um, and she got her uh, graduate or graduate degree in math, um, which is really cool. Um, she did take a brief break to start her family, but she always wanted to be a research mathematician. As you can imagine, during the time, so she um, finished her schooling and entered the workforce in the 50s. Um, as you can imagine, at the time, even let alone being a woman, but being a black woman, it was a very difficult thing to do. So even though she wanted to be a research mathematician, she mainly found employment as a math teacher. Um, so that was the main way, a way of entry into her being able to work with her math skills. So she finally was able to find a position with the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, math. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but this was the precursor to NASA, which of course everybody knows NASA. So um, she worked with them for a little bit, and then once NACA became NASA, she began her career, which I thought was really, 
I had to like reread this twice. She began her career as a computer. So when you think of computer, obviously in our minds, we, you're, we're looking at a computer, we're thinking about a computer, but she was literally a computer. She computed math problems. Um, so she began her career as a um, computer. Um, she was part of a pool of women that did math calculations for a variety of different applications at NASA. Um, she was um, noticed um, for her prowess. Um, she was tapped one day to assist an all-male flight research team. They were impressed by her skills. And I am directly quoting um, Ms. Katherine Johnson here. She said they forgot to return her back to the pool. So let's say I mentioned before, she was part of that pool of um, computers. Um, and they were so impressed by her skills that they decided to um, keep her on as a um, as an aerospace technologist. Now, as you can imagine, it was still very difficult for her to do. And she mentioned throughout her career having to be assertive and assert herself. This is one of the reasons why she's one of my favorites. She really asserted herself and made sure that she was included in these things because as she said, I have the skills, I know what I'm doing, I need to be at the table. So she did a lot of things. She made sure that she advocated for herself and made sure that she got these roles. So the big milestones included are calculating the launch window for the 1961 Mercury mission and the trajectory for the 19, for Apollo 11 for the 1969 moon mission. So she was doing some big things. Um, she was doing some very important things as well. Um, she, of course, was a lifelong advocate for STEM education. Um, one key uh, thing, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Obama um, for her work in the um, STEM fields, for her work with NASA, and she has received a slew of other honors. She is internationally um, recognized. She's gotten awards from all over the world for her work and her, not only her work, but for breaking barriers for women, for, um, for African-Americans, for women, for African-American women. Um, she um, is most famously portrayed by Taraji P. Henson in the movie Hidden Figures. So if you've heard the name Katherine Johnson before, that's where you heard it for. She was um, a main character in that movie. And of course that movie was a book. We're gonna talk a little bit here about the book in a minute but she was a main player in that as being part of that pool. So um, just as an aside, highly recommend watching the movie or reading the book, Hidden Figures. Um, she was portrayed just as a point of reference. She was portrayed by Taraji P. Henson. And this movie does a really great job of um, depicting what it was like for her to break all of these barriers within NASA. So highly recommend you take a look at that. And so now that we've learned a little bit about our tech pioneers, I'm just gonna take a quick break here to mention that if you have any questions about any of the people that we discussed today or um, where to find other information about tech pioneers, make sure to put those into the question section. If you're on a desktop or a laptop, uh, you can just tap on the little question icon and put them there. Um, or I'm sorry, to put them in the control panel. If you're on a tablet, you can tap a little question icon and put them there. So as we like to do with um, some of our more, um, for some of our programs, we also like to include some fun home activities. So these are two activities that I found. One is a series of black history cards on um, black heroes. And these are just some of them. There's like three pages of them. Um, so you can learn a little bit about other, um, you know, notable figures in black history and not only just with tech, but in other fields as well. And if you're, if you're a kid or if you're a child, or if you're a child watching, if you're interested in becoming an inventor, there's a little sheet there of how you can make your inventions come to life. So these activities can be accessed through the handout section. If you're on a desktop or a laptop, the handout section of the control panel. If you're on a tablet, um, you can just tap on that little uh, people icon and you'll be able to access them there. They will also be um, included on the YouTube video as well. So if you wanna go back and download them for the YouTube video, you can do that too. I highly recommend you take a look at these um, resources, especially have um, some younger ones with you. They're really valuable resources. And now for the grown-ups, um, do have a couple of book, um, a few book recommendation, recommendations for you as well. So of course, as I mentioned before, I know I went on about Katherine Johnson, I just think she's so interesting. Um, 
Hidden Figures. Um, it was a book first and then it was a movie. Um, I enjoyed the book and the movie, so can't recommend that enough. Um, a Quantum Life, which is just an, a good, a wonderful story about a um, African American gentleman who um, became an astronomer. So really, really cool. Just did a lot of cool um, tech stuff there. And the last, last Negroes at Harvard about the class of 1963. Um, group of men who integrated Harvard University. So just some really um, awesome books there. These, of course, can all be found in the library. I think all of these can also be found on um, Libby by Overdrive as well. So highly recommend that you take a look at these resources here. So now that we've reached the end, I am going to go ahead and turn back on my camera. Chris, just let me know when you are back on as well, and we can um, see if there are any questions. All right, yes, as Tanisha said, it's time for the Q&A portion. So if you have questions, go ahead and submit them. And looks like we do have a few coming in here. Um, someone's asking about Katherine Johnson. Um, did she, was she able to give feedback on her portrayal in the Hidden Figures movie, do you know? That I'm not, that's a good question. Um, that I am not sure. I'm just gonna go back in the, cause I can't remember when the movie came out. And um, when she passed away, she might have been able to because she passed away in 2020. And I believe the you know, movie came out in 2019. So it is entirely yeah. possible that she did. Now that um, I'm thinking about it, they, they might be referring to the book now that I'm thinking about it. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think she did. I know that she has done a ton of oral histories. Um, as part of my research um, for this program, I drew a lot from her oral history that she provided to NASA. Um, okay. So I, I would be, I would be surprised if she wasn't a contributor to the book. Um, and again, I know that not to go on about one particular tech pioneer, because of course everybody that we talked about today are very important and they've contributed wonderful things to the fields of technology. But right. her story is very inspiring, you know, based on the time that she was doing it and her contributions and what she was able to do. Absolutely. All right, let's see here. Um, someone's asking about how, how you decided to pick these tech pioneers. Were there any special resources, um, like any library resources that you used or what was your, what, what guided your selection? That is an awesome question. So um, I definitely used uh, library resources um, as part of my just for leisure reading. I like to look through like new releases and see what's out there. And so like certain names would come across. Um, I know that I read the or I um, skimmed through the book 100 Facts About um, the Negro. Um, I know Henry Louis Gates was at least an editor on that for the newer version. Um, and I, some names popped up there. Um, also, there were a few lists I found um, that had like lists of, you know, African Americans that made contributions. Um, of course, when you're looking up these lists, just as a quick tip, um, some of them are sponsored by certain companies, so you just have to be careful of that. But um, I did find a lot of, you know, from nonprofits and a lot of organizations that had lists of people. I know that I found uh, Mark Dean and Frank S. Green Jr. and not, um, Nola Hilton that way. Katherine Johnson was somebody I always wanted to discuss. I know I did Tech Pioneers last year. I did George Washington Carver, Mae Jemison, and a couple of other people who were um, integral in the parts of STEM. But part of my um, methodology with picking the Tech Pioneers is I also wanted to make sure that I picked people that weren't that well known. Um, right. So, you know, people may have heard of Katherine Johnson, of course, but, you know, I had never heard of the other three until I started doing my research on this. So, you know, um, a lot of times um, people that have done great things and always get the recognition that they deserve. So I wanted to make sure to highlight people who we may not have um, heard of before. Great. Um, another question came in and uh, it's kind of related to what we just asked. They asked um, where they can learn more about local black history and resources on that. And I know our landing page, the Black History Month landing page has some resources there. Um, Gail uh, bi biography and context is there. So you can look up almost anyone in that database. But I posted the URL in the chat section. So if people want to 
to visit that, they can. There's just one last question, and then I believe we'll, we're done. Um, did anything surprise you when you were learning about these different uh, program, uh, these different subjects for tonight's program? I think the thing that was the most surprising is being somebody, and I'm going to use the air quotes younger, but being somebody yeah. younger was just how many firsts there were, like how many of these people, how many of the people that I researched were the first people to do their thing. Um, so, you know, um, Mr. Dean, Mark Dean was the first African-American to be inducted into his organization. You know, Katherine Johnson was a series of firsts. Um, you know, there's people who, you know, Nola Hilton was one, you know, she was one of the few, a handful of people to get a degree in physics, um, African-Americans, let alone African-American women to get a degree in a uh, doctorate in physics. So, um, so many people who were first. So I think that was the thing that surprised me because, you know, people have been achieving and doing awesome things, but at how many recent firsts there were. Um, so that was definitely the most surprising. And of course, the other surprising thing is how I didn't know about these people until I started putting together this program. So um, that's why we wanted to do this program. We, we wanted to do African-American Tech Pioneers part one and two because we wanted to make sure that people knew about the people out there doing all of these wonderful advancements. That's right. Well, it was a great presentation, Tunisia, as usual. We're very grateful for your research and your, just your, your support of Black History Month. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining us now. We have some contact information here on our screen. If you want to contact the library, you can go online at hcplc.org slash contact. You can also look at our program uh, events calendar there. And also I'll mention again the Black History Month uh, landing page, hcplc.org slash Black History Month. All right, Tunisia. Well, it was great to do this program with you tonight. And I wish you well, and I wish you all well this evening. And we'll see you all soon. Bye.